In the distance I heard the roar of pear trees. The trumpets sounded. The voices of men cheered. There was the sound of the fort gates opening and closing and the footsteps of elephants and horses. Vandiyadevan came to know that the noises attracted Nandini's attention. The nurse who was in charge got up startled and came a little closer and said, Mother! It seems that the master has come. Nandini said, I know, you go to your place. She said. Then looking at Vandiyathevan, he said, the officer is entering the fort. After inquiring about the emperor's welfare, he will speak to the fort commander and come here. You must leave before he arrives. What is the news that all were KDR said? She asked. Amini. That valiant Vaishnava Chikamani called herself his sister, is that true? Valavarayan asked. Why do you doubt that? Can it be easily believed that the green parrot and the tiger monkey are the children of one mother? Nandini smiled and said, in a way what he said was true. We grew up in the same house, in the same family. He loved me like a younger sister. Shame! I have disappointed him. Well then! The message sent to them by Alvar Kadayar is that Lord Krishna is waiting for them. The valiant Vaishnava devotees are also waiting to see the wedding scene where they will marry Kanan. Nandini let out a sigh. Aha! He still seems to have lost that power. If you see him, say this for me. Tell him to forget me altogether. Tell him that I am not at all worthy to be a devotee like Andala. I don't agree to that, mother. Don't agree to what? They did not accept that they could not become Andals. Andals had to do bhakti, sing songs, weep and shed tears, touch the flower and do all these things and marry Kanan. But they did not need such trouble. All they had to do was let Lord Krishna see them. Rukmanai, Satyabhama, Radha, Gopi Kastris. He will immediately give up and make them sit on the throne they were sitting on. Sir! You are good at flattery. I don't get it. Ma'am! What is flattery? Praise someone to his face. Then turn around and sit with your back. What for? It's for looking at the back and not the face. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? You are very bad at talking. You're flattering yourself now aren't you? Do you also turn your face and turn your back? Empress! I never turn my back on the battlefield or the ladies. You may flatter me liberally. After hearing this, Nandini smiled and said Kalir. You're a wizard, no doubt about it, it's been a long time since I laughed like that. She said that. But, lady. It is too dangerous to make themselves laugh. The lotus in the pond laughed and rejoiced, the honey beetle fainted. Vandiyathevan said. You are not only a magician, but also a poet. I will not fear flattery. I will not be disturbed by flattery. Who got you? Did you just call me poet? So. When I was a boy some people called me monkey's mouth. It is said that after a long time I heard it only today from their coral mars. Did you say monkey moose? Who's that smart? None of them are alive now. I didn't call you that. I said you looked like a poet. I will sing a little but I will sing in front of my enemies. That those who do not die by lamentations, may die by words. Sir, Kavaraja we are raising he. You still haven't told me what your name is. My native name is Vandiyathevan, my title is Valavarayan. Royals. Has come from the old illustrious Vanadi Raja clan. Your kingdom now. Sky above, earth below. Now I am the sole ruler of all the worlds. Nandini was staring at Valavarayan for a while. There is nothing out of the ordinary. You can reclaim your native kingdom. How is that possible? Can what goes into the tiger's belly come back? Can the government that joined the Chola Empire come back? I can make it available. Amini. Don't. I have never had the desire to rule a kingdom. Even if I had a little it has disappeared after seeing Emperor Sundara Chola today. 
it is better to be a free man who does not know where to get food the next day than to be an emperor waiting for someone else's hand. That's my point too," said Nandini. Then, as if remembering something she had forgotten, she asked, Why are the men of the little rascal looking for you? She asked. He is as suspicious of me as his nurse. What doubt? How did I get the signet ring with the palm insignia? Nandini's face showed a slight hint of fear. Where's the ring? She asked in a startled voice. There it is, madam. Shall I also take it away? He said and showed the ring. How did he know you had it? Asked Nandini. The desire to see Sundara Chola Emperor was in my mind for a long time. I used this seal ring for that. After seeing it, the fort commander asked me how this ring came to me. What did you say? Nandini asked in a tone of horror. I didn't tell you their names, madam. I told you that the great Palyavatere gave it. I also told you that it was given at the Kadampur mansion. Nandini sighed. The horror in her face and voice was gone. Did he believe what you said? She asked. Doesn't seem entirely convinced. Is that why he left men to follow me? Perhaps Tamayanar wanted to put me in front of him when he came back and find out the truth. Vandiyathevan said. Nandini smiled and said, Don't be afraid of the big predator. I will see to it that he doesn't bite you and eat you. Ma'am. It is news to the world how much influence they have with the ambassador. But I have urgent business outside, and therefore I request your help in escaping. So what's the urgent matter? There are so many. For example, they should look at all were KDR and give their answer. What should they say to him? Tell him to completely forget he had a sister named Nandini. Let's say, but nothing happens. Which one? Forgetting themselves. It seems that even I, who saw them twice by chance, cannot forget them. How can someone who has been with them all their lives forget? Nandini's face grew a look of triumphant pride. Her fingers seemed to penetrate Vandiyadeva's chest. Why were you so eager to see the emperor? She asked. What wonder that I desired to see that beautiful man of world renown. In the world the heroic kings desire that their valor and manliness may increase, and that their kingdom and glory may expand. Thus they ask their subjects to pray. But what do they pray about our emperor in the monasteries of the Buddhist pictures? Hey pray that. I have been longing to see such Kali Yuga Cupid. Yes, the emperor is very proud of his beauty. His queen Selvak is even more proud. Princess? Who are you talking about? You are in the old house, an insolent curmudgeon, I mean that young goddess Kundave. Come. You are lucky here's the strategy you've been looking for. Put it to good use. Thus said Valavarayan to himself. Nandini, who had been lying comfortably on the bed all this time, suddenly got up and sat upright. Sir. I'll tell you something. Will you agree to it? She asked. Tell me, lady. You and I can make a deal. You'll help me. I'll help you. What do you say? Amini. You are the queen of the all-powerful Danatakari in the Chola Empire. She is so powerful that she can do whatever she wants. I am a powerless person. How can I help you? He said. Wanting to know whether he was speaking from his heart or his lips, Nandini fixed her sharp eyes on him. Vandiyathevan was not disturbed at all. I am in need of a private servant. Would you accept a job in this palace? She asked. I have already agreed to do the same service for another Madarasi. If she refuses, I will come to you. Who is she, who comes to compete with me? You spoke so dearly a little while ago, that young brat is Kundave Devi. Lie. Lie. Such a day cannot exist. You're trying to make fun of me. Empress. Many people have already stolen and seen this leaf. So nothing bad will happen if they see it too. Saying that, Vandiyadeva took the leaf that Aditha Kari Kalar had given to Kundave and held it out. 
Nandini held the leaf under the lamp and read it. As she finished reading, the lightning flame from her eyes reminded Vandiyadeva of the forked tongue that emerges from the mouth of the Naga serpent, unbeknownst to him, his body trembled. Nandini looked at Vandiyadeva with a solemn expression, Sir! You intend to escape from this fort with your life, don't you? She asked. Yes mother. That's why I came to seek your help. I will help you escape on one condition. Tell me the condition. What kind of leaf do you give to this leaf, bring it back to me and show me, okay? You are making a very dangerous condition. Did you brag earlier that you are not afraid of danger? Doesn't risk deserve a reward? Prisa? Do you want a prize? You will get a prize you never dreamed of. A prize for which the great Palyavatare, who is all-powerful today in the Chola Empire, has been penance for years. Saying that, Nandini again sprinkled Moanastra on Vandiyadeva. Pity! Valavaria's head was spinning. Chest! Take courage! Don't lose knowledge! He said to himself. Just then he heard the screeching call of an owl from a nearby garden as if coming to his aid. Asked once, twice, thrice. Vandiyadeva's body trembled. Nandini went to the place where the owl's voice came from the garden, the real magician has arrived. She said. Then he looked at Vandiyadeva and said, I don't need him anymore. But I will send him two words. Perhaps, he will be useful for you to escape. For a while you will go that way and hide in the dark. She pointed in the opposite direction to where her nurse had gone before.